This episode was brought to you by Dashlane. Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Pocket Science, science experiments with things that you can fit in your pocket. And today we're doing an experiment on memory because your brain totally fits in your pocket, right? Last year I posted a video with Ali from Collab Lab all about how our memories cannot be trusted, and I thought it would be quite a lot of fun to show this precise phenomenon in action by conducting a little experiment. Now as you're going to see very soon this video is actually a little bit of a mishmash as pocket sciences often are, because we've got the Ines and Ali pre-YouTube next up, Ines at YouTube next up, and of course the current Ines from the present. Don't actually know why I'm referring to myself in the third person. But anyway, the objective of today's experiment was I was going to read out a story to someone at YouTube Next Up, then get them to retell the story to someone else the next day, and to continue that chain for as long as was feasibly possible, which as you'll be able to see was only two iterations. But basically, I wanted to see whether people's recollection of the story changed, and based on the fact that false memories can very easily form, we did think that was going to be the case, and I was also interested in seeing what Ali thought might happen. The video we just did is all about how errors get introduced into memory and make false memories. And in fact, like it, it happens all the time, like way more than we would expect. And we think that they're definitely going to change. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. These people are, are all YouTubers, they're all very creative people. I think that they will change it more than if I were to do it with someone who is not, you know, in YouTube next up. So you think that because you're making people imagine things that they're going to make it introduce some errors into their interpretation? So essentially, if you have a very fertile imagination, then you end up incorporating imagined events into your real memory. So if you spend your whole time with a load of YouTube what, uh, next WhatsAppers, next uppers, they are going to be imagining things all the time. And the likelihood is, I think, they will incorporate some of those imagined things into their real memory. So without further ado, let's start with the beginning of the story, and more importantly, how it changed in the hands and mouths and brains of the YouTube Next Uppers. A couple of years ago, my friend John Smith and I were playing around in his room when he jokingly slapped his hands against the wall, and he saw that a small crack appeared. His response to this was to gently punch the wall, which created a small but prominent hole in the plaster wall. This was very funny and surprising at first, but because it was college property, he was scared they might say something to him, so he decided to cover it up using a poster. Mm. This was actually quite ironic, as we technically aren't allowed to put posters up as the blue tack would potentially ruin the wall as well. Then I got Endigo to tell the story to John from Soliloquy. All right, so as far as I can remember, um, a while ago, I do not remember the, the time, but a while ago, um, Ines and her friend, as I remember, was called John Smith. So they were sitting in a room, I believe they went to school, um, and they were sitting in the room doing something and... I, wow, I, I don't remember anything. Okay, so anyway, they were, they were basically sitting in a room, it was like a dormitory room or something. Okay. Um, and what happened was, um, I believe it was him who accidentally hit the wall somehow, and this caused some kind of a crack, uh, which was kind of awkward since it was like, they didn't own the room, yeah. uh, so they were like, "Oh shit, we're gonna, we accidentally broke the wall." No, uh, and for some reason he uh, punched it another time. Uh, there was probably some context that I've forgotten to this, but he did that anyway, causing a much larger hole. And they were like, "Oh god, we 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 messed up." Uh, so like they they tried to you know cover it up with a poster, like nobody's gonna notice. There's a poster in the way, and uh, no biggie. And then I got John to tell the story to Gabrielle Say, and this is where stuff gets really interesting. Okay, to the best of my knowledge and memory, the story starts in a dormitory at a university. There are two people, um, I think, in a relationship, boy girl, and they're having a reasonable time, I guess, and one thing leads to another and a foot goes through the wall and so the guy is like a bit frustrated a bit pissed off so he punches the wall which puts a second hole in the wall which the university is not going to like so what he does is he grabs a poster puts it over the holes 
forget about it. So in just two days, the beginning of the story had already changed a lot. Now I'm actually going to skip the next part of the story entirely because Endigo forgot it. Then there's another part to the story that I've completely forgotten. But here's the ending. At the end of the year, a couple of days after moving out of the room, he realised that he had left behind a phone charger. So he asked the college if he could get the keys to go back into his old room again and get it back. And he actually discovered that some workers who had been working on his room had found the hole and clearly had decided to try out the same thing, as there was another larger hole next to it. His friends reported that a few days later there was some heavy building work on the wall. And Endigo's retelling. And then uh, they basically moved out a while later, because uh, I believe school ended or whatever. And he realized that he had forgotten something in there, as far as I know. So he called up the school after having graduated and like, hey, can I go back to the room? I forgot something in there. Because he needed to go back, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he got to go back to the room and check and noticed that there was a second poster in the room as well. And he was like, what is going on? Uh, looked behind it and there was a similar hole back there, meaning that the next person who had the room after him had done the exact same thing, which was hilarious. Right. And the final version. So, much later, he's graduated. He's gone, he's finished his exams, or whatever, the year is over, that kind of thing. He remembers that he left something in the dorm. He goes back with permission, looks, there's a second poster in the wall, and behind the poster is a new hole, meaning a second person did the same thing and used the same idea. <laughs> I was actually quite surprised the story changed this much and unfortunately I wasn't able to get further iterations because Next Up was quite busy, I forgot, but still it changed a lot in just two retellings. It was interesting to me to see how certain embellishments were introduced and how even small details like the name of my friend, the object he forgot, the fact that the people who created the second hole were workers and not tenants were very interesting. Because in some cases, forgetting those details didn't really alter the overall gist of the story, but in other ways it did. The story became a lot more extravagant in a mere two iterations. Endigo created a new ending and soliloquy a new beginning. That being said, there are plenty of studies that show that memories, stories, events and anecdotes change and may become more embellished as people retell them and as time goes by. But in spite of that, seeing the process myself happen so quickly in front of me was really spooky to me. And you know another thing that becomes spooky when you realise you don't always remember things the way you want? Passwords. You know when you have a password that's expiring and you did create a new one but it can't match any of the old passwords you've ever used because that's just too unsafe, right? So you come up with mm, Inace's usual password, special character, 2018, but then two days later when you go to log in, turns out you forgot it. Surprise, surprise. So you then curse the fact that password remembering is just getting harder and harder as you desperately click on the forgot your password link to create Inace's usual password, special character, 2018 July. So what can you do? Get a Dashlane account. That's right, Dashlane is a free password manager and generator that safely and easily keeps track of all of your passwords without you ever needing to sacrifice another ounce of unreliable brain memory. Because you already know that if you want a unique, safe and hard to hack password, then you're just probably not going to be able to remember it. One of the things I like the most about Dashlane is how quick and easy it is to set up. I dare say it's quicker than setting up another blinking forgotten password form. So if you want to save time and brain power, memorise just one password and let Dashlane do the rest, then head over to dashlane.com forward slash draw curiosity and click on the Impala for the rest of time. Also, I want to say special thank you to Ali from Collab Lab, Endigo, John from Soliloquy and Gabrielle C for appearing in this video and pandering to my various memory whims. Do check out their channels, they're linked in the description, they do get up to quite interesting content. Thank you, of course, to my wonderful patrons and Patreon for supporting my content. And as always, thank you so much for watching me, and I'll see you in the next one.